I remember when I was a little girl, I asked my dad, what was the worst smell in the whole galaxy? He told me about a livestock colony he visited as a young man. One of those places that grows the kind of meat that they advertise to health nuts as non-synthetic, raised outdoors. The reality was revolting. Cattle, packed in, shoulder to shoulder, all the way to the horizon. They were jammed so tight, feeder bots outfitted with buggy wheels literally drove across their backs. The air was thick with flies and disease, and the stench of cows that got sick and died where they stood, their meat putrefying under the red sun. (sighs) He described it all so vividly. It felt like I was there. And when I was growing up, I was so proud that my dad had smelled the worst smell in the galaxy. But of course he hadn't because he hadn't smelled the inside of a Kigyar pirate ship. Let me go! Please don't antagonize the bird monster! They dragged us through the belly of their ship. The walls and floor were covered with years of soot, guano, purple blood. Everything caked so thick, it took on an almost cave-like texture. Baby. What are they saying? They're taking you to the airlock just up ahead. Are we going to die? That is a likely scenario. It's a beautiful language, isn't it? The guard turned his back just for a second, and Bostwick was on top of it. (laughs) Bostwick's quick, but the Kigyar are quicker. He cranked his head down, sending Bostwick sprawling across the room. Bostwick looked dazed, but accomplished as she held a fistful of Kigyar feathers in her hand. The creature got down low, right in Bostwick's face. He looked her dead in the eyes. She wasn't so tough anymore. She was shaking, paralyzed with fear. We all were. I tried to think, but my mind felt like paste. I couldn't string thoughts together. He says he is now opting to send you all out the airlock in pieces. And now he's swearing. And, oh, well, I'm not translating that. People describe your life flashing in front of your eyes before you die. That's not how it is. It's not in your eyes. You don't see it. It's a mass remembering, an explosion across your whole mind, every synapse firing at once. I thought about my first kitten, my last cigarette, the skin on my grandmother's ear, a phone call I tapped three years ago, what I had for dinner last week, thousands of moments. Remarkable and unremarkable, flooding past in an instant. Pharaoh's memories, Maya's memories, they all started to to coalesce. My memories as Pharaoh were violent and passionate. As Maya, my life was quiet, secretive, academic. Growing up, I, I wanted to be a professor. I studied xenopsychology because I wanted to know how other minds worked. Back then, I... I honestly didn't think about how the military would need people who could analyze alien behavior. But they snatched me up. And during the Covenant War, I worked for Oni, psychologically profiling the enemy. <sighs> I must have written hundreds of reports on Sanghealy honor debts and Kigyar. And then suddenly, it all came rushing into focus. Baby, translate this exactly. I've met many of your species. But even for jackals, you are incompetent fools. Are you trying to make things worse? Trust me, just do it. You see, the Kigyar are scavengers. Greedy, opportunistic. Tell them they're imbeciles. Ignorant nestlings to throw away such valuable prisoners. But the Kigyar are also cowards. Well, I can't say this outcome was anything but predictable. The leader turned away from Bostwick and ran at me. Jaws open, threatening. He stopped inches from my throat. His breath was hot and wet and reeked of death. I didn't move a muscle. It was a a dominance ritual. A social pissing contest. The Kigyar will never pick a fight they don't know they can win. He could take me physically, but now he was wondering, what did I know that he didn't? What do you think? 
Your shipmistress will say when she hears you've let such valuable prisoners float off into space. He just stood there, his milky yellow eyes darting back and forth between my own, furious. But now, clearly afraid. Uh, what the hell did he just say? They are taking us to see the ship, mistress. The ship was clearly imposing. Once. A top-of-the-line covenant warship. But the year since the Prophet's downfall hadn't been kind to her. Her scarred hull was a patchwork of other ships, scrapped or captured in battle. I had no idea what was waiting for us. But for the moment, we were alive. And we were still local. Or at least we seemed to be. I hadn't felt that familiar queasy jolt of entering slip space. Bibi, anything useful you can tell me here? My records indicate this vessel is called the Dedication. <laughs> no! Wrong! Suddenly, we were face to face with the ship mistress. Dedication. Covenant name. My ship. My name. Roughly translated, the ship mistress would like to welcome you aboard the Rampant Perdition. Turzal was the biggest Kigyar I'd ever seen. Skin like old leather and naked to the waist. Clearly the pirate's life was good to her. She was gnawing on the charred limb of some unidentifiable creature. Speak. You say value. What value? I take yours now. No. I don't think you want to take that tone with me. My ship. You. No power. Do nothing. She says that if you wish to live, you must prove your value by providing her with 60,000 credits. You want credits? We can get you credits. Just let us back to our ship and we can... No waiting. Credits here. One hour. Ah! I take head. Next hour. Next head. If value, live. If not. We had an hour to live. And we were going to spend it in an old covenant prison cell. Like everything else on this ship, it was in bad shape. The only light was a ghostly purple glow from the energy shield locking us in. Bostwick hadn't spoken a word since the airlock. She looked like I felt. Broken. Uh, guys? Scared. I don't think we're alone in here. <laughs> Fifteen different cells on the ship, and the Kigyar had stuck us in the same one with the Sangheili. The Sangheili shifted angrily, tried to stand, but something was wrong. I looked closer and saw he was hurt. His leg was mangled, mashed and hanging by sinew, and there was a sticky pool of dark purple blood beneath him. He wasn't trying to hurt us. Easy. He was dying. Easy. We don't want to fight. Did the Kigyar do that to you? Kigyar are weak and stupid. They could not defeat me. This was Livruka. Baby. I have no translation. It seems to be an ancient word, something not in common usage. It rose from the ground. Devastation. <clears throat> Death. Wait, you saw An anomaly. Me? What was it? What did you see? He says he was at one of the colonies on a diplomatic mission. He saw the event and was badly injured, but he cannot describe it. He keeps using the ancient word. Uh, and now he's just ranting about a, a, a demon. Demon? He's got to be talking about the Master Chief. You have brought this upon us. <laughs> Humans. Let a demon desecrate the holy site. There are consequences. What do you mean, desecrate? What did you see? You demon. He cannot save you. What is coming? There are more. Many more. This is just the beginning. 
Beginning of what? Hey! Beginning of what? The Sangheili went still. His four-hinged jaw slack and his eyes clouded and unfocused. He was gone. What do we do now? I just stared at Mashok. There was nothing we could do. Maybe there were going to be more anomalies. Maybe the Master Chief was involved somehow. But we were about to get our heads sawed off. It was someone else's problem now. This may be an inopportune time to discuss, but while you may not be able to save yourselves, you could still help save humanity. Maya, if you just give me the chip, I can relay the data to Oni. Are you kidding me? Why? So that they can cover it up? Intelligence is a tapestry. This data must be combined with everything else Oni knows to separate truth from fiction. Oh, please. Oni doesn't care about the oh, truth. Oh, what do you know about oh, anything? I've, I know what I I've seen. I have and almost I've seen a whole infinite lot of, intelligence. No, I know. You're just a zombie. Wow, impressive. I am. Shut up, both of you. To hell with the truth. We can't do anything. Don't you see that? What does it matter if this is just the beginning or if people are going to die? We are going to die here. Today. No. We're not. I'd almost forgotten Bostwick was there. We can't die here. We need to tell everyone. Suddenly, Bostwick was talking to me again, gaining momentum, a wild fire behind her eyes I hadn't seen before. We can't let Oni or anyone else cover this up. I get it now. You should fight for something bigger than yourself. Pharaoh told me that. You told me that. I couldn't believe it. This is bigger than any of She'd us. seen that Pharaoh was a lie. Power to do seen that I was an Oni puppet, you but... to try. But she didn't care. She still believed in the ideals. Bostwick. Get us out of here. I know you can. But suddenly, our time was up. <laughs> he pointed his ragged, bony claw at Bostwick. Two Kigyar guards grabbed her. I tried to rush them, but they were too strong. And just like that, Bostwick was gone. I paced around the cell, trying to think. She was gonna die. They were gonna kill her. I couldn't let that happen. I had to think of a way out of that cell immediately. There was no escaping a fully functional Covenant brig. But this ship had seen better days. My eyes scanned the cell. The energy shield looked strong and steady, but the walls, the walls showed signs of hasty repairs, battle damage papered over with whatever the Kigyar had on hand. I traced my fingers along a crack. (coughs) Maya, what are you doing? Whoa, is that an energy conduit? Okay, neat. So now we're going to die while being exposed to radiation. BB, can these conduits carry information? Uh, Theoretically. Right, so if I plugged you into it... There are several reasons why that is an atrocious idea. Firstly, the electric shock might kill you. Uh Secondly, the electric shock might kill me. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, UNSC AIs are expressly forbidden from interfacing with Covenant ships. Uh But seeing as how you are already carrying me over to the conduit and I don't have a way to physically stop you, I'm guessing that it's about to happen anyway. Uh Well, what's a few million volts between friends? Once more, onto the breach. When that first jolt hit, it felt like somebody punching me in the back of the head. That was the easy part. The second jolt sent me flying. I woke up halfway across the cell with my ears buzzing and my muscles vibrating. But my heart was still beating. Bibi! Just because that worked doesn't mean it was a good idea. The shield was down, but we couldn't access many other systems. I sent Mashok to hide in the hangar bay while we tried to pinpoint Bostwick's location with the ship's internal scanners. I found a bio-reading two decks up, but it's faint and getting fainter. We're not leaving without her. I crept through the ship. Screens torn off bulkheads. The walls would seem to be alive with rot. The Kigyar were known for their powerful senses. That's why the Covenant made them scouts. I had to be silent, but the floor was so cluttered. Every step was perilous. One wrong move, and they'd be on top of me. Up ahead, there was an open doorway. I had to get past it, but I could see light and shadows dancing out of it. I carefully crept up to the edge 
and peered inside. The room was filthy, packed with Kig Jarl crouched on the ground in tight circles. They were agitated, heads up paying full attention. They'd spot me in a second if I tried to sneak by. But then another Kig Jarl entered. He was tall and lean and had bright quills. An officer, maybe. He was carrying a heavy vat. He stopped at each circle and ladled out some ungodly stew onto the ground, filled with flesh and eyes. I almost gagged when I saw it. As it slopped in front of each circle, the Kigyar went ballistic, burying their faces in the piles, fighting each other to get their fill. I realized they were distracted. And the moment the last circle had been served, I rushed past the open door and started up the maintenance ladder, climbing as quickly and quietly as I could. The scanner showed Bostuk was directly above us, but I had no way of knowing if she was alone, or even still alive. When I got to the top, I leaned out of the maintenance shaft, my eyes adjusting to the darkness. And then my heart stopped cold. The room was filled with Covenant soldiers. Was it an ambush? Then I realized they weren't moving. They were staked to the walls, severed limbs and body parts of Covenant elites and brutes. A few human marines, too. They were arranged in gruesome tableaus, like some sort of history of the war told through taxidermy. Then I spotted her, strapped to a table at the end of the hall. A Kigyar surgeon preparing his tools above her. He was getting ready to add her to the collection. I needed a weapon. Anything. There was only one thing I could possibly use. It was a brute. Or more specifically, his skull. Bleached white and massive. I quietly lifted it and crept up on him. The first strike caught him by surprise. But he was still on his feet. He raised his plasma knife, and I hit him again and again. He finally went down. But I was sure the others on the ship had heard the racket. Ha! Take that, you stupid flea bag! Bostwick, hey, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, okay, let's go. There was no point in being stealthy now. We ran, hard. The ship was a maze of burnt-out gear and dead-end corridors. But we finally made it. We could see our ship at the far end. We sprinted, and we were almost to our open cargo door. She stepped out. Terzal had caught us. We were surrounded. No value. You lie, trick, waste time. I'm guessing she's not telling her men to let us go. It's hard to precisely translate her instructions, but they do involve clawing your eyes out. I knew I couldn't bluff our way out of this, but... Maybe I didn't have to. It suddenly occurred to me that I could offer her something of real value. I can prove our value with a question. Why hasn't this ship jumped to slip space yet? What sort of pirate attacks and then just hangs around risking retaliation? She says their ship is mighty and powerful. None can stand against them and live. No run, no hide, strong! You're a liar. I've seen the condition of your ship. You're not going to slip space because you can't. Because your engines don't work and you have no idea how to fix them. (laughs) Tell me I'm wrong. She had a powerful warship, but she was trapped in a single star system at subluminal speeds. She was a shark stuck preying on minnows. Impressive insight, Maya. For a human. My scans do indicate that the slip space engine is locked down. Probably an old security measure put in place before the Kigyar seized the ship. You fix, yes? This only value. We can fix it. But the price is our freedom and our ship. She hissed and leaned forward. The Kigyar stirred, uneasy, spring-loaded to unleash more violence, waiting anxiously for Turizal's decree. I was anxious too. I felt like I just played my last card with her. And if she said no, I knew we were going to end up on that wall of horrors, one piece at a time. She leaned in close to me, and I 
felt her exhale on my face. I didn't breathe, but I didn't flinch either. You fix, you freeze.